All right, we're in an Eclipse jet that's been modified with the version 1.9 Garmin touchscreen avionics. What that means is we've got Garmin 625 ADS-B in and out WASP GPSs. We've got two of those. Uh, ADS-B out, ADS-B in, full communication to iPad. So these two items are connected. And then I've got the, the Garmin 796 mounted, um, which is a great sort of just additional map that uh, ties, again, into uh, all these systems. And the cool thing is they all talk to each other. So when you make a change on the flight plan here or the flight plan here on your iPad, everything stays in sync, which we'll demonstrate here in a minute. But this is the Eclipse version 1.9, just came out this year in 2017. Really the 1.9 gives you the Garmin touchscreen, the Garmin touchscreen GPS navigator which fully integrates into the uh, IFMS system, the, I, the ISMS, uh, PFD, and the whole setup. So, um, and I've got another feature in this airplane, which I think is really smart, which is a Garmin 796, so that, so that you've got yet another map to look at for both, uh, both situation awareness and even things like uh, approach plates and such. So, you know, we can look up Tulsa here where we're going, and we can pull up airport diagrams, we can pull up, uh, you know, the approach plates themselves. Uh, and, of course, the aircraft will be positioned on approach plates as we shoot them. So I think this is a really good setup with the with the uh, XM weather as well. So you can look up, you know, very detailed weather. Winds aloft, we're looking at here. Right, yeah, next rad, uh, TFRs, you name it. I use, this, I use this winds aloft quite a bit. So, but come back down to the panel. Um, Probably the other than getting ADSB out compliance and ADSB in weather and traffic, probably the other really big advantage of this setup is the fact that your your iPad, if you're running four flight or Garmin Pilot, will talk to the panel or vice versa. And so just to demonstrate, if right now I'm going direct to Tulsa, if I hit flight plan, and let's just put a, a waypoint in before Tulsa, so I'm going to click on that, insert before. And let's put in uh, Memphis, which is K-M-E-M. -E okay, I'm going to go ahead and go to heading mode on the out on the autopilot so that my plane doesn't start moving around since we're flying. But look what happens here. It says load route from panel, and it's picked up this new waypoint, which is which is Memphis. When I say load route, there it is. So it's automatically synced the flight plan from the panel to match the uh, the iPad. Now, let's say that after Memphis, I want to go to Little Rock. So I'm going to just drag that graphically down to Little Rock, just like that. I'll put in Little Rock as a waypoint. OK, I can now click on this button and send to panel. So I'll click to send to panel. I'm getting a message light here that says I've got a new flight plan. Click on that. Sure enough, new flight plan. There it is, there's Memphis, there's Little Rock, and I can activate that flight plan, and there we are. So now you see it's added Memphis, Little Rock, and then Tulsa. 19, now we'll go back direct 19, Tulsa, and that'll allow me to re-engage the autopilot without having to uh, move things around. Now, since I went back direct Tulsa, it's talking back to the iPad. It says load route from panel, load route, and there it is back direct Tulsa. Now a couple of other features of this setup that, that you get with this version 1.9, you do get ADS-B out, meaning that the the airplane complies with the ADS-B out requirements, but you also get the benefit of ADS-B in. So that means you get weather and traffic. And uh, today is kind of a day where there's not much weather or traffic. Let's go up here in the northeast. You can see there's some weather that's picking up my iPad. That's coming from this unit directly. So there's no other source of weather than, than this unit. Uh, but there's not much traffic today, but if there were traffic, we'd be, we'd be seeing traffic showing up on this, disc, on this screen. And on this unit, I can do the same thing. I can go to home, I can hit weather, and uh, again, there's just not much weather to show. You can show where it's painting some up here in the north northeast. It hasn't downloaded all that because we're not in that area. Uh, today's a pretty clear day. Um, I can also do traffic here. And again, there's no traffic to display, but if there were traffic, it would show up here, and it will give you a, a, an audible warning. And in fact, the audible warning will tell you where the traffic is. It'll say, traffic high, 1,000 feet, uh, 11 o'clock. 
that will tell you where to look. Some other features of the unit that I use quite a bit is the uh, V calc. So, and I have that as a, I have that as a quick key. So I can very quickly go to V calc. And if I want to be, if I want to be at uh, 10,000 feet, um, you know, let's just put two miles before Tulsa. Um, I would, I would need to sit at 300 feet, 326 feet per minute, or I need to begin my descent at an hour and eight minutes if I want to target a uh, 1,500 feet per minute uh, vertical profile. And uh, when you're coming down on arrivals, this page is is very critical. And uh, I, pr I program it to where when I'm on my map page, that uh, VSR, that vertical uh, descent, is always displayed there so I can watch it. Uh, going back to the home page, again, there's traffic, there's terrain. We're, we're high, so there's no terrain here. Um, there's the weather that I showed you previously. Um, you've got a nav page. Um, you can, of course, look look at your flight plan and make pretty e easy edits. If they give us an arrival, if they give us an arrival to Tulsa, I can do load approach, load arrival. Uh, I guess that's the uh, Vinta 2 arrival. You pick your transition, pick your runway. I'm not going to load it in this case. You can do the same thing with an approach. Let's just set up for ILS runway 18 left. I can pick my transition, and I can load it. I'm not going to do it in this case. Um, you've got nearest functions where you can see your nearest airport where it is in the direction. You can also look up nearest flight service station if you need to call a, uh, a uh, flight service station. Um, you've got uh, waypoint info. So if I want to look up Tulsa very quickly, look, look at the altitude, I can look at the procedures that are available to me, the runways, I'll move this around, you can zoom in and out. Back when we land, we'll all back to go to this mode. Frequencies. But because touchscreen is just so easy to operate, so easy to just click around. And then utilities, I use this, this fuel planning quite a bit. So current position to Tulsa, use the sensor data that it's getting. Right now we've got uh, 1,100 pounds of fuel on board. We are burning about 405 pounds per hour. And I'm going to land with 524 pounds, which for a VFR day is not more than sufficient. So here's traffic. We've got traffic at uh, about 12 o'clock, 1,000 feet above. And there's that traffic, American yeah, Airlines, 1417. There are two, Mike Bravo, Connect Tower, 121.2. 121.2, thanks for your help. Two, Mike Bravo. Tower Eclipse at 512 Mike Bravo with you inbound 36 right. November 512 Mike Bravo, Tulsa Tower on my 36 right, clear to land. Clear to land, 36 right to Mike Bravo. We're on the course and we're going to maintain 2.5 until ISV, which should be our glide slope intercept. They're approaching ISV. We're set up with VRA plus 10. We have our just approach altitude from minimums up there in our target. Watching for that glide slope to come in. We're at VRA plus, up oh, there it is. All right, it's coming in, press altitude change. Now we're pretty much just gonna let the autopilot take us down at that glide ratio. And I'll just do occasional inputs here to just help it out a little bit. I was doing a pretty good job just maintaining that glide slope with me doing occasional inputs to my V speeds. You can see I'm really not touching a thing. It's just bringing me down right, right on the glide path. Maybe give it a little bit of a downward notch. And we can let it fly us all the way down to minimums, again, with very little inputs. 
You're a plus 10 on the, on the uh, lateral glide slope, on the uh, vertical glide slope. Field inside to my Bravo. November 512, to my Bravo, to our runway 36 right, clear to land. Clear land, 36 right, to my Bravo. Alright, so with that, we're going to hand fly it, but you can see how easy it is.